Sometimes polynomials can be factored in two parts to make groups that can be factored out. In the example below, we can see that we have four terms. So what we can do is divide them in half. We'll put a line right down here. Careful to keep the minus sign with the 5x. On the left hand side, we can factor out an x. This will leave us with an x plus 4. On the right hand side, we'll factor out a negative 5. This will also leave us with an x plus 4. Well now we can see that x plus 4 is a common factor. So we'll factor that out and put it in front. And this will leave us at x minus 5. We have factored this term by grouping. Let's take a look at another example. This example has quite a few more variables in it, but the process is still the same. We notice we have four terms. What we'll do is draw a line down the middle, keeping the positive sign with the positive 3xy. On the left hand side, we can factor out an x. This will leave us with x minus 7y. On the right hand side, we can common factor out a positive 3y, and this will leave us again with an x minus 7y. We will now notice that we have common factors, x minus 7y on both sides. So we can factor that out. We put that in front, and that leaves us with an x plus 3y as our second factor. And we have now factored this by grouping. Sometimes we have to find patterns within complex polynomials to help us with our grouping. Well, let's take a look at the example below. So what kind of pattern could exist in this expression? Well, we have an x squared minus 10x plus 25. That should seem a little bit familiar. And we have a minus y squared. Well, let's put the line here between the 25 and the negative y squared. On the left-hand side, we have a trinomial. So we can factor that. We're looking for two numbers who multiply to positive 25 and add to minus 10. Well, those would be negative 5 and negative 5. So we could put the x's in the front of each bracket and a minus 5 in the back of each. As we have two duplicate factors, we could write them as x minus 5 squared. And now you can see we have x minus 5 squared minus y squared. Well, this looks an awful lot like a difference of squares. And in fact, it is. So let's set up two large square brackets. We can put an x minus 5 in the front of each bracket. We could put a y in the back of each bracket. We make one of the brackets positive, one of the brackets negative. And for our last step, we simplify within each square bracket. The left side will leave us x minus 5 plus y, and the right side will leave us x minus 5 minus y. It might look a little funny, but it's definitely been factored.